Now, the rest of the story. Morning. Welcome back to the rest of the story. More money down the drain, right? Well, not really. Just because it changes the, helps with the quality of your day, the quality of the ride, uh, how well your work day goes in the cab tractor. Uh, these are the cab air filters for the 7600, hydraulic oil filters for the 7400. And I didn't bring it up with me, but I can actually drop off the old one. Uh, the fender, the front fender here is a little worse for wear. I know some guys would say uh, duct tape it or, you know, bolt it or whatever else. So it looks, looks like shit, but i um, not going to do that. This is actually, if I was going to break either of the fenders, this one is actually the one I'm glad it is because see these cracks right here? Uh, believe it or not. Those are from clear back to when I first got the tractor. Um, grandpa, my grandpa actually did this some way, somehow, uh, when he was running it. Because the first like 50 hours I uh, put on this tractor were by my grandpa. I mean, I put on like two or three like throughout the winter. Uh, but the first thing this thing was used for was for pulling that POS, uh, was it 4500 Case IH, disc same same quality as that 6500 uh concert tilt chisel plow i uh, didn't like it which is also why i didn't have it for very long but grandpa actually pulled that disc with the 7600 and did all of our seed bed prep that spring but the problem is is that granted it was it was new to me but uh, grandpa did manage to, to find something to hit. So, got to go through, and I don't have to, but I'm going to go through and change out these, these filters. I change them out a lot more often, more frequently than I used to. Granted, they aren't, they aren't a year old. I do go through and hit them with the air hose and try to get them cleaned out to a certain degree, but these two red guys right here. Uh, the problem is, is these filters are the ones that are behind the seat in the cab and they get completely filled up with with dog hair now you can make the argument quit taking the dogs with you i could i really could um hasn't crossed my mind as far as not taking the dogs with me uh he's he's my buddy um he's my best dog friend um keeps me company so like cutting hay all day and baling and uh, spreading fertilizer. The dogs keep you company. I mean, I could be alone with my own thoughts, but that probably isn't the best for for anybody. So, um, you know, a few bucks for some filters is fine. You can definitely tell it, it blows air better. I'm gonna go through and do this. I got a lot of a little bit of everything to do today. You know, just one of those kind of days. They're calling for thunderstorms, which if it does what it did the other day where it's just a light speck of yellow and red, which it's not a lot, but what happened the other day was then that turned into a three hour event. Hope it doesn't happen because I wanna go get the Harrow, get that over here, um, look at that a little bit, uh, grain drill, I gotta go get our grain drill, get that up here because I have to seed some waterways and some stuff like that. And then I'm gonna pull out all of our fencing stuff. We are about 95-ish percent way done with, with checking fence. Uh, the fence that we have left to check, we shouldn't need the roll wire and, well, we could need all this, I guess, but um, it's literally the worst fence that we have. And it's only like 200 feet long. Um, it's one of those where unfortunately you just, you try to do the best you can to patch the fence that's there, but then the brush is also, the brush that ends up grow, uh, growing up throughout the summer here, or the rest of spring, um, is, contributes at least half of what keeps the cattle in. Because the brush is so thick and the little fence that is there. Um, it gives the cows pretty much no incentive to push it. 
the plan is literally just to, to say to hay with it and doze it, push it all into a ditch, bury it, and start fresh with no trees, no nothing there. But it's just one of those many, 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 many things where um, you just got to get around to doing it. So uh, what this needs is the stuff out of the back because I don't need to list it rattling around. I'm going to put the GPS and the monitor into the gator. It should only take me a day, not to hook it up, but an actual like day, give or take, um, just to run the few boundaries that I need to run. And I don't need to run them all. Um, the big thing that's actually going to slow me down is just the, the travel between uh, the fields that I need, to, I need to run. So waterways is pretty much all of it except for uh, two, 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 two strips. I have two strips that I have to relay out all together. Uh, but everything else is just making sure that the waterways are in the monitor so that way when we plant, the Roshoffs and the planter will actually turn on and off when you're going through the waterways because I don't like putting seed down in a waterway when it's just money out the window. I forgot my hose. Crud. I broke my hose for the, the grapple bucket. I left that in the truck. And not this truck, the other truck. That truck isn't here. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get some of this stuff done. I'll update you as I feel like I, I need to. As a matter of fact, maybe I'm gonna go out and check the calves real quick. And as you can tell, we've already chiseled. Um, I had footage of that. Uh, I was filming Dad going through and uh, working up where we spread manure. I mean, the end of this strip is where we always parked stuff. And we had bales stacked, so uh, this had to be worked up, and then everywhere else, here, here, and here, and then a bunch back that way where we spread manure. Orion's well, finally done. Um, I haven't ran it. I won't be running it until this fall because I'm planning on also unhooking the chisel plow, that deer that dad bought. I'm going to be unhooking that and uh, getting the, the disc hooked up because it all goes into those waterways. Oh, you guys can look at the cows. Nope, no new tags or no, let me rephrase that, no calves without tags. Nothing here. One of my heifers. You guys remember Dum Dum or Wing Nut, whatever I called her. Which, of course, I imagine she's on the other end of the lot. Oh, yeah, right there. Uh, she's the touchy one, the sketchy one, the one that always wants to stay away from you. Uh, she's starting to. To show that uh, she might be dropping a calf here before long. First calf ever. And yeah, I'm hoping she'll chill out. She probably won't, but I can be just as mean as her if I really need to be. Um, my other heifer, where is she? Oh, right there. Uh, she isn't really showing much yet, but she's actually really looking like she is carrying a calf. And I don't think you guys saw Scooter yet, but that's his mom. And he is this tiny little guy. I don't know where he's getting the lighter color from because the bull um, that Ryan, of Ryan's, um, all these calves in here, as of right now, these little ones are actually, um, they're actually out of that bull of my brother's that failed his, uh, his checkup so at least we know he was working at least until he got here I mean there's Ryan's new bull for the time being but uh, this little guy he's pretty mellow little little bull calf he'll be getting fixed castrated here when we uh, when we weed him off but the heifers are doing awesome she's just got a little hint of white on her belly button what's up you gotta be a little bit cautious because the cows do actually test you a little bit. I mean, she's huffing a little bit when 
when I'm uh, checking her calf. Uh, the other one, she's a yellow tag. I haven't gone through and changed the cow tags out yet. So I mean, you got the blue, which I don't have any blues in here other than of my, my own original cows. Uh, green, yellow, red. Green is a, um, uh, was it a three to five year cow, year old cow. Um, yellow is a five to seven year old cow. And then a red tag, which is that red old cow up there, um, is what they consider a broken mouth cow. A broken mouth cow is one that they basically go off their teeth. Uh, she doesn't have much for teeth or they're, they're ground down, which ultimately means she won't be able to take in feed and it potentially leads to they're not able to take in you know feed properly and you know in turn their body condition goes downhill uh, she's actually holding up pretty well i mean all things considered uh, for what i paid for her i her calf actually paid for her and a little bit more actually and then unfortunately she's the one that i said that looks like she's open because she is the one that the bull keeps jumping which at this point in the game if the bull's jumping her it's it's not because that because she's got a calf in her so i'm hoping the storm actually goes to the south of us a little bit they're calling for drier weather they're i don't know i've heard people say drought the pasture is really taking off uh here just lately the only reason i don't have the cows out there right now is because there's a big gap in the fence right there and that whole fence line we are planning on replacing here which it wouldn't take very long to do it's just one of those things where you got to do it so i think that's enough for a cow update i've been trying to keep a closer eye on them you know every day at least once or twice because like i said i got the the two heifers out here which can tend to be idiots so let me get back to the shed and start being a little bit more productive with my day well might as well call it a day before the wife calls me and says to call it a day but give you guys an update which i do it every year being definitely not a terrible job to do uh, but as far as running field boundaries it's more tedious than anything. Let me power it up real quick here. Had to uh, pull one of the wires off the 46 and the globe, of course. Um, really simple. The only thing that really bugs me is if you could do every boundary perfect on the first try every time, it'd be great. Uh, but what tends to happen is, is if you have a little bit of overlap, depending on what situation you're in, when you're running boundaries and the monitor after you do well 40 50 acre field and if you overlap just wrong or right uh, then what happens is, is that when you go to finish your boundary it'll kick you out and say that it cannot finish the boundary because it is it's overlapped and somebody's yelling outside I'm just about done. I just got to do one more job. It's just mom shutting the garage door. Um, shut this off before I forget about it. Uh, we got to mix feed up probably the next day or two. Definitely within two days for sure. But the monitor, as far as this goes, uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, no, you're not going to see a video on me doing it. It's relatively... Uh, uh, monotonous job I mean it's it's the same thing over and over again until you're done I uh, gotta clean all the fencing supplies out we have one more fence to do but it's just gonna be one of those things where I just gotta admit that there's other things that need to take precedence right now so I got our grain drill out we only have like 6.7 acres uh, to seed yet and I'm pretty sure that's all it is because I just looked at it on the monitor um, went through made sure everything is is freed up greased it uh, took the air hose to it and cleaned out both these compartments uh, really wasn't anything in there I mean you always got to make sure that you get all the previous years 
uh, seed out of it because then the bug, or not the bugs, but uh, the mice will get into it and just make a mess. I went over, pulled the harrow back, and definitely a lot more aggressive than the harrow we used to have, which our old harrow never used to pick up the egg bags. This is some of the wrap from out of my brother's place. Those product of those bales that we wrapped a while ago. So there's that. Um, I actually prefer this harrow over our other one uh, to a certain degree. It is more aggressive, so it moves more dirt, uh, levels the field off a little bit better. Um, plus it's longer, so it's a one pass system. Uh, it was an old Lindsay harrow, which is, you know, it's your standard four section uh, old school harrow. I mean, we still have, or I still have one of the, a single section Harold that I pulled behind the four wheeler for like cleaning, up, like leveling the driveway and the yard and everything else like that. Um, the only problem with those is that it seems like you had to go over the field uh, two or three, four or five times uh, to get the field to look right. I mean, I always made sure, I, I always set the sections uh, pretty aggressive. Uh, something that's kind of gone to the wayside for us is we used to, with that four section Harold when we had acres and acres of hay plus when we let the cows out in the field on hay ground you see guys do it with pastures too yet um, but they drag the harrow over the field and break up any manure cow pies that have frozen throughout the winter and spread them out so at least that way you're not leaving these clumps of crud across your fields across your pastures it makes it a lot more enjoyable going out and let's say cutting hay so uh, that was actually one of my, f well, one of the handful of first jobs I started to do. I mean, you can't really mess up harrowing. So, uh, 46 in the planter, going to be sitting probably for another week yet. I'm thinking next week, uh, if the weather holds. That's what I'm looking at right now. You see this big void. I got to drop the chisel plow off the 82. I want to get the VT on it. At the very least, if I don't get the VT on it tonight, which I don't have to, uh, but I can at least, and the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm thinking that's what I'll end up doing. I'm just going to pull the V82 up in here. I get it in the shed so I can shut the door because they're calling for storms, which they were for today too, midnight till sometime tomorrow morning. And I mean, the storms we had today, we had a little bit of thunder and a nice, dare I say pleasant shower I mean, it didn't come down heavy it didn't didn't do any washing it was just a nice gentle soaker and the nice thing about that is is that I just put in well it was 60,000 pounds I don't think I don't think it was 40,000 it was like it was either 40 or 60,000 pounds worth of fertilizer down on the valley so that nice little soaker we just had this morning did an awesome job at getting my hay started up just saw on instagram a local guy just posted that first cut hay is is going to be early this year uh, for perspective it's april 7th i do believe let me check my phone yep it's april 7th and the grass the fields everything are greening up pretty awesome and we already have a couple inches worth of growth. I mean, for us, this part of the area, part of the world, I don't expect to see people mowing their yards, but yeah, I just, just yesterday saw a guy that was out mowing his yard. I think it's a little early for that yet, but I'm also one of those individuals that if I could let my house yard grow long enough or I could cut it with the disc bind, I would, but I can't, so I won't, but I'll try. So, um, with that it's six o'clock it's definitely this is the part of the year or the the season of the year where it really irritates my wife because it's nice out and when it's sweatshirt weather t-shirt weather um i'd rather be at the farm working on stuff than at home sitting in my my recliner but oh well dad life right so I'm actually going to finish up here, go home and get this video edited for you and get it up. So thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. Take it easy. Keep in touch. I'll talk to you guys later, tomorrow, maybe.